wheel down and then you, you hold your wheel down and then you push hard onto your crank this right will cause tension in this upper part of your crank arm and this upper part of your chain so I can show you an example, a quick one by undoing the quick link I'll be using the, the tool here so that it looks it's faster so as you can see, it's not fully locked in this part it's not fully really locked so to make it locked right I'm going to hold my wheel and push can you see it? it just locked itself already because I didn't it's quite worn out I don't need much effort for it I'm going to show you one more time hold the wheel and the pedal and then just move it downwards then it will cause it will pull the chain in opposite direction and then the, it will lock the quick link just like this just one quick pop and then it's locked and then you're done so the chain is already on the wheel the yeah, chain is already on the bike I mean on the wheel so from here you can start spinning it the sound that you're hearing is from the from the brakes it's not it's not on perfectly okay. so first I don't want to mess with the brake you want to check your tuning of your gears so now right I'm going to uh, mess it up lah. let's see let's see um, let's just give you the best example okay I'm going to undo all my gears this will take a while more usual even if you're on the road it will take quite a long time I'm going to undo both my front D and my rear D to give you the best example so let's say you're on the road something happened you have to tune your gears again this is how you want to approach it okay of course best scenario is you don't undo them for my case is an example so I will be undoing both of it so first thing you want to check is your limit screws your limit screws are the two screws on the top here you just use any screwdriver here these two from what the limit screw basically does right is it helps control how much the derailleur can move in and out so how much it can move in and out meaning right i i made it so that i cannot move my derailleur past this point so if I made it move, move past the point that I want it to move, right? Like for example here, I can show you. I push my derailleur to the maximum now. This is the maximum, okay? The chain will not drop because the, it's blocking or I have something to limit it. That's basically the limit screw. If I start to change how the limit screw works and I allow it to push it out, for example, now, I should be able to watch this if I push it out now right you see my chain will drop yeah so if your chain drops like this right it means your limit screw is not done right that means you're giving it too much so you have to tighten it a little bit more the first one the one on the outside here usually controls the biggest one how much it can come out this direction the one on the inside controls when it is the smallest how much you can move inside towards your frame so you get it one moves out one moves in high low basically so let me put back my chain first Give me a second.
Rồi bạn ơi. Okay, so I'm gonna re redo the first one, the one on the outside. I'm gonna tighten it more. So tighten it will mean that I reduce the amount that it can move outwards. That way I can prevent it from slipping out. So now you can check. Okay, this enough. So how to know whether you are doing it right, right? Is that you, when it is on the smallest cup and on the biggest, right? When you spin, it should make uh, almost minimal or no sound at all. Why minimal to no sound? Meaning, um, at because uh, there's cross chaining, so sometimes uh, the very small, minute sounds, right? It is almost impossible to get rid of it because um, there's some form of cross chaining. So there's still a little bit of sound and I want to get rid of it. So I just undo it a little bit more so that I allow it to come up more. Because now it's kind of uh, inwards, too, too inwards. So the chain is still rubbing on it. So now I allow it to move out a little bit more so that the chain can be further, eh, the derailleur can be further away from the chain. So I find that this is just nice. I don't see any more sound. Once the top one is done, and you move on to the inner one. So for the inner one, you want to make sure that the, the imagine this is the for the inner one. This is how you want to do it. Imagine this is the chain, and this is my guide. Okay, so visualize this is the chain, and this is the guide. How you want it to be right is that the the guide right when on the smallest cock right will be in this position like this if you get what I'm trying to say because um, the chain will be resting on the smallest cock here so you want a full range of motion from here to here if you if you adjust the smallest uh, the guide right this is the guide like, of the derailleur if you adjust the guide right to be right in the middle right and when you go to the highest point right you'll be rubbing on the top inside because currently it's on the smallest that's why so on the smallest you want it to be here just nice like that give it a little bit of space if you give, don't give it enough space right at certain times right it will start rubbing um, and bouncing when you're bouncing it uh, you'll rub on the inner part so i want to give it some space so that when it bounces right there's no sound and it has enough space to move all the way up and down like that. Yeah, that's basically what I'm trying to say. So now I just adjust it so that it is a okay. Just nice enough space. So on the final track, all you can do is you spin it and then you move it up over here. Right? Make sure that you can move it up and move it down. Yeah, you're done. So you're done with the limit screws on the front derailleur. Now you have to move to the rear derailleur. Rear derailleur, very simple. There's another two screws here. There's three screws in total. One, two, and three. Each screw controls something different. The first one here, this one, is called the B screw. What it does, it controls the tension of your, of your chain. So I give you a quick example here. Okay. Can can undo it lah. Okay, if I undo it right, you can see. It's not that obvious. But the chain is actually growing looser. I'm just slightly tapping it. Like, oh shit. Undo, I did it. I okay, undid too much. So, I can show you what if I tighten it more now. The more you tighten it, it will grow tighter. 
Give me one second. I'm sorry. Be back to me. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm tightening it. Uh, and I'm tightening it quite a lot. So as I tighten it more, right, you can see now the chain right will slowly grow tighter. What if you over tighten? Hmm? What if what what, what happens if you over tighten? You over tighten, it will it will stretch your derailleur. You will see your derailleur start doing this like, oh, this like, very aggressively, especially in your bigger gears. In your bigger gears, right, the derailleurs will start looking like this, like very 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 stretch. That's when you know um you're overworking it uh, and you will hear a lot of sound because it's not it's not nice. So currently it's like a little bit too tight. It's quite hard to feel, but usually a good judge, right, is that it sh it shouldn't be it should be just like this. I'll show you what I mean. And get it just nice. Like that. Not too tight, not too loose. Being on the smallest here and on the smallest at the back. Okay. So once you're done with that, you can check your limit. For the limit, right? On the rear, uh, on the rear, right? It's quite. Another way to see it is like this, through like this. There's a uh, three gears in total: the two jockey wheels here, and your cassette. So, how you want to visualize it, right, is you want to look at it as a line, okay? You want to make sure they line up perfectly or uh, straight. So, you want to, the cassette, or uh, not really perfectly straight, but in a sense that the guides on the two jockey wheels, right, will be slightly, ever so slightly, just a few millimeters, one to two millimeters on the outside like this. So, this is your... Cassette, and this is your jockey wheel. The jockey wheels, the guides, right, will pull the chain just one to two millimeters off to the side, like that. Just a little bit. Don't need, it doesn't need to be much. Okay. So you can use this and you go find the low one. Let me just see if I'm messing with the correct one or not. Okay, so you can see right, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, like if you see straight on, as I, as I'm moving, as I'm tightening it right, you can see it move inwards this direction, very slightly, okay, you, you can hear that sound, I'm, because I'm over tightening it to show you an example of how it's moving, okay, so what you want right, is to move it outwards, one millimeter outwards of the cock in this direction. Okay, so now I'll move it back inwards. You can see it moving. Okay. Now it's aligned, but I want to move it one to two millimeters that direction. So I just undo it a little bit more. Just like that. Okay. And then I'll spin the wheel now. To check for any sound because this is like the normal metal metal sound so it's okay i don't hear much clinking and everything can just do a little bit of fine tuning make sure Oh, 
gonna spin my wheel. What does this sound? So that means it's, I moved it too much. I'm spinning again, and then the sound is gone. So it should be here. You can just adjust it until you find that there's no sound. So now I find that it's better. It's a lot more quiet. Okay. Then the next one, after you have adjust the smallest one, is this one, the biggest one. So adjust the biggest one, right? It's the same thing. You want to push it to the biggest cup. So this one, right, limits how much it can come in into the wheel. If you don't do it right, right, your chain can actually jump inside. Jump like this. I think some of you are familiar. But I can actually do this. This means your high, uh, lowest limit screw, right? The L limit screw is done wrongly. It is too loose. You want to tighten it a little bit more. Okay? So let me put it back on. By the way, you want to really make sure that it is done right. Because if not right, if this keeps happening right, it can really damage your spokes quite badly. Oh, my glove stuck. Okay. So. And spin the wheel, put that down. So as you can see, mine is done right because when I push it up all the way, and on the maximum you push it down hard right, no matter how hard I push it, it won't jump into the wheel. Between the wheel and the cassette. So this is how you want it to be. Okay, and you can just make it jump back down. Okay, now after you have calibrated. That's just the calibration of both the limit screws. You want to do the tuning, extra tuning. So to do that, first, there's a, this, this is called a barrel adjuster. You want, to, you want to make sure right, you move it just right in the middle. Middle meaning, right, you can see the metal part just nice at the top, like halfway. That's all you need. So that you can tighten it or loosen it. it gives you the option. Okay, once you're here like this. Of course I'm saying the worst case scenario where you have to undo everything. Okay. Hand tight, hand pull it. And use your pliers or anything like that you have on with you, right? And then you just tighten it. You say you know you can't pull it tight enough, right? A good hack would be to actually make this a little bit tighter, to tighten it more. So what a barrel adjuster, uh, what's the purpose of it, right? It is that it actually adjusts the tension between uh, the the cable or the tension of the cable. So make undoing it right, which makes it longer, actually tightens it because the length increases. So it will tighten the cable. Whereas screwing it in will make the line more slack or the cable more slack because it's, there's a lesser distance if you roughly understand. But I can show you now and start spinning it. I'll move this direction. Like so you can see. So, how oh, I'm gonna check my gears first, right? Move it up one. Okay, move nice, nice, one time. Move it up. Okay, so now you see there's a bit of sound, right? To so troubleshoot this, right? Really, the first sound, right? You move it in that way a bit. If it doesn't go away right, you start to turn it clockwise and counterclockwise. So first, I usually turn it clockwise. A little bit, just a little bit, to see if there's any sound or not. To see if it gets rid of the sound. Yeah. So I just turn it a quarter round only. And you, you can hear that it sounds a little bit better. I turn it a little bit more. It's slowly going more and more silent. Up to this point. Now there's no more no more rubbing sound. Now I know that it's just nice. So I continue to work my way upwards. Well checking 
Oh ini juga song. You can hear this this sound, this this metal sound. That means my front derailleur is rubbing. So you have to adjust it later, a little bit more. So how you want to adjust your front derailleur, right? Is that screw that I was talking about just now that, that adjusts the guide. You want to move it a little bit. Yeah, so slightly. But now, the sound is gone. Of course, um, on the biggest and the smallest side, right, there will always be a thing called cross chain. That means the angle is like this. It's too extreme. One is all the way here and one is all the way there. So more usually than not, right, it's almost um impossible to get get out of it like, unless you buy like a Dura Ace group set, the higher end one. They will have more adjustment for you to play with. Oh, where can we get this Dura Ace group set? Oh, we can get it for Irony Bike Shop, which can shoot off. So from here, then you check moving downwards whether it's okay. Go, cop, uh, go click by click. So as you can see, right? One click will move one time. So that means it's just nice. So now, an example I'll show you, right? Of um, the wrong tension. What it, look, what it looks like, okay? For example, I, I now just start messing up the tension by... Uh, over over tightening the barrel adjuster. So in this case, right, you can see here. one click, it doesn't move at all. Okay. One click, it doesn't move up. I clicked it once already. Now I click it the second time, it moves up. So my shifter is on the third gear, but my gears right are on the second. So I know right that my tension is wrong. Okay. So in this case, after I click it once, uh, click. That means my gear right is um, one less. Okay, if you get what I mean. Supposed to be on the third, but it's on the second. So I want it to move upwards, right? How I remember it, if I want it to move upwards, okay, I spin the barrel adjuster towards the wheel. So I want it to move upwards, so I spin it this way. <laughs> so I spin it like this. So my shifter is on the third gear, right? I want my cock to be on the third gear. Yeah, I want my chain to be on the third gear also. So I just keep spinning until it moves to the third gear. Yeah, it jumped up to the third gear already, but there's a lot of uh, sound and everything. That means it's not on perfectly. So you want to keep spinning it towards that direction again, because I want it to move there. Until the sound is gone. And here, it's getting better. Then up to this point, I can barely hear any sound, just like this, that means third gear on the shifter and third gear on the cassette, that means I'm, I'm correct. Then you start checking every other gear individually. So, if I want it, the, the same will go for if I want it to be the other way around, for example now, it's uh, too loose. The chain is too loose. Hey, sorry, the the chain right is yeah too loose. When I click it once, right, it will move up three times. In this case, watch. I click it once. It moved up three times. That means right, it should be on the second gear only. But currently, it's on the third gear. In this case. I want me to move downwards, right? Downwards is towards me. So I spin the barrel adjuster towards me. Like this. Spin it towards yourself. Yeah. I'll spin it towards myself. You s just keep spinning until you don't hear any more sound. If you keep spinning in this direction, you hear a lot more sound, right? And the sound is growing more and more, right? That means you have to spin it the other direction. Counter clockwise or clockwise. Yeah. 
So to this point, I hear no more. I hear that there's no more sound. So I'll go down back to the smallest and check each gear individually again. You don't hear any noisy rubbing sound other than your set. Alright, so now you are done with the rear 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 eraser. Moving on to the front eraser. Front eraser, all you want to do is usually uh, for road bikes, right? We uh, it's best to install a barrel adjuster because there's no barrel adjuster on this unless you are using a newer newer models the newer models of Altegra and 105 has it but mine is an older model so it doesn't have it so I have to just play around by using my hand to find the correct tension if that makes any sense Tightening it, a spin. So all this sound that you're hearing, right? It means that the chain is rubbing on the guide. So I have to adjust the limit again. When you're adjusting the limit screws, right? You always want to undo your your guide, uh, your cables. Make sure that there's no tension while adjusting. You can hear it. Miss light rubbing. Rubbing the sound. For me, I'm actually okay with it because I usually won't go to the small, smallest, smallest cock here and the smallest cock here. So I'm gonna leave it actually. Tighten. Put the cable on. Make sure I need some more. And then I. Okay, so I made a mistake there. I didn't loosen my shifters to the smallest, and I bolted on <laughs> the cable. When you do that, then you have to undo it again and re-tighten. Re remember to move your shifters to the smallest gear. Okay. difficulties let me try again to troubleshoot you can actually just hold the cable and feel what is wrong when you swap gears you should be able to feel it moving Pull it somewhat hot and tighten it. Sadly, for my bike, I did not put a barrel adjuster for the front derailleur, so I cannot really show you how to uh, adjust it using a barrel adjuster. So Press it all the way up, and then we're done. So if you find that it's rubbing a lot, right? In my case, in my case, because I don't have a barrel adjuster, I have to use a plier to tighten it and pull it tighter. But if you have a barrel adjuster, all you have to do is to spin the barrel adjuster to make it longer, to undo it, basically. And what that will do, 
it will actually tighten the cable. If you want to test by moving the full range, make sure that it doesn't rub against your front wheel too much. So in this case, I have some sound that you can hear. On the biggest wheel. You can hear that this area here is very noisy. So I'm going to check again what's wrong. I guess nothing is wrong. So what I'm looking out for on the front derailleur right, is actually if it's rubbing the the chain is rubbing the two guides here. Yeah. So if it's rubbing one side on the other too much, right? If say it's rubbing um the inside too much. If it's rubbing here too much on the inside, it means that it's too tight on the inside here. Okay, if it's rubbing here, the one on the, uh, if it was rubbing on the inside too much, right, the one here, it means that it's too tight. If it's rubbing here too much on the outside, that means it's too loose. So yeah, keep, keep in mind. Too loose, too tight, this cable. Okay, so I usually bend the cable out of the way, just like this. Doesn't hit my leg, doesn't hit the wheel. Same for this. Okay, so now... My gears are fully tuned. It works perfectly fine. 